ndmetv.com, the everybody network. From Palm Springs, California, it's Curiosity with your host, Renee Poingard. Here's Renee. Hi, and welcome to the show, Curiosity. This is a show where we dig deep to find out what your friends think about you. And our first guest today, Miss Sheila, is curious as to what other people think about her. How are you doing, Miss Sheila? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So let me find out about you. Okay. I understand that you're married. Yes, I am. How long have you been married? Been married 40 Two years. Forty-two years. This past December. Yes. Wow! Congratulations. Thank you. Thank so you. I got to ask you another question. Mm -hmm. If you had to tell our audience one thing that you feel is important to keep a marriage together for forty-two years, what would it be? Wow. Hmm. Uh -huh. That's a lot to think about. Uh -huh. Uh. Well, being able to. To take, as I call, the hits uh -huh. and the misses, uh -huh. uh, being able to communicate. Uh -huh. Sometimes communication doesn't work, but still, you got to still talk. And in my case, I do a lot of praying. Oh, I like that. Yes. So let me ask you another question. You have three children? I have four. You have four? Yes. So tell me, boys, girls? I have both. Two and two. Two and two. Mm -hmm. Anybody under 30? No. Do you practice with what you did with your marriage, communication with your children? I try to. Uh -huh. When you say, I try to, what stopped you from well, doing that? Well, sometimes, it depends on the mood that they're in uh -huh. and the attitude that they may be forth with. Uh -huh. And so that'll keep me from saying something at that time. Uh -huh. Later on, I may go back and say something about it. You know, I can, it's easier for me to talk to my boys than it is to my girls. I understand that okay. sometimes between mother and daughter. <laughs> yeah. But I noticed that you said, depend upon the mood that they're in. Yeah. Now, Miss Sheila, what about your mood? Well, mm. my mood, since they're grown, uh -huh. you got to handle this. All I can do is pray for you, be there for you. Um, I will talk with you about it, help you try and work it out if uh -huh. I can. Uh -huh. But if you don't come to me, and want to communicate with me about it, uh -huh. I'm not going to push the, the envelope. I'm okay. not going to push it because I feel that where you are in your life, you know I'm here, so all you have to do is just talk. Okay, so now that we're talking about your children, your mate, I want to ask a question about you. How old were you when you got married? The first time. Ooh, okay, yeah, yeah, the first time. I was 17. You were 17. Mm -hmm. So at 17 years of age, you were thinking about a career, aspirations. What was on your mind? What did you want to be? Who did you, what did you want to accomplish? Well, at that time at 17, it was basically to get out of my mama's house. That's what it was. That's what it was. Uh -huh. And usually at that age, you'll find that's what most teenagers want to do is get yeah. out their mama's house uh, under their mama's thumb, mm -hmm. so to speak. But for me, Is there anything like in the back it. of you that you felt like you wanted to accomplish or I want to be? Let me ask this I question. I like to sing. You like I to sing. sing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Always a singer. Do you feel that that can happen for you now? It does. Every Sunday. Every, every every, si where, whenever I'm asked, mm -hmm. I sing. Okay, you're on now. Give me a little, give me a, a 30 second song. Come on now, Miss Sheila. Okay. Uh, I sing because Ooh. I'm happy. Mm. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches over me. Miss Sheila, thank you for that this morning. You're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. So now you sing mm -hmm. every morning or when you're asked, which mm -hmm. should be quite often because you have a beautiful <laughs> voice. Thank you. And I understand that there is something that you're pursuing right now? Yes, mm -hmm. I <laughs> I am pursuing event planner. 
I'm mm. going to, to school, went back to school for event planner. It's online. Mm -hmm. I can do it at my pace. Mm -hmm. So that makes it a lot easier than being set. You got to do it this way, this way. That, yeah, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not into the routines anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like I have to be able to do it at my pace. But I also pursuing, um, I make lap scarves and coverings. Hmm. By hand. I want to find out about a lap scarf, but be scarf before I go there. Okay. What made you decide to be an event planner? I was at a graduation ceremony of one mm -hmm. of my sisters at church, mm -hmm. and I heard this voice say, "Event planner." Hmm. And I kept hearing "event planner," mm -hmm. and then I heard, "You do this for everybody else. You might as well." get a certificate and get paid for it. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So it, I'm know, not familiar with a lap scarf that you say, so let me ask you a question. You put it on your lap and put your computer on top of it? No, like no, no. Uh -huh. A lap scarf you use in church. Well, what, what is a lap scarf you use in church? You cover your lap, your legs uh -huh. with a scarf, uh -huh. especially if your dress is a little too short. Uh -huh. If you need to cover up here, you can cover up here. Uh -huh. Also have, I make those that I call coverings. I don't know if that's what it would be called. Uh -huh. But to use for, in the event, the Holy Spirit lays you out on the floor, we oh. cover you. Oh, Miss Sheila, hold on to that. Okay. That is good information. Mm -mm. It is wonderful meeting you. It's nice to meet I you. I can tell you're a warm, kind person. And I look forward to talking to you. But guess what? What? The next time we come back mm -hmm. after this commercial, okay. we're going to reveal what people think about you. Okay. All right. All we're right. coming back with Miss Sheila because she is curious <laughs> to find out what people really truly think about her. We'll be right back. Miss Sheila, sing us out to that commercial. Hmm. I sing mm -hmm. because I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I sing because. I'm free, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Welcome back to Curiosity. I just have to tell you, we have an amazing guest with us today, Miss Sheila, and she's curious to find out what her friends think about her, and we're going to give her the reveal. So, Miss Sheila, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so now we've asked your spiritual associations, mm -hmm. your family, mm -hmm. and your friends. Okay. And this is what they say about you. All right. All right? I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. They say that you are a beautiful spirit. Oh, thank you. And they also say that you're kind and loving. <laughs> okay. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I, I do. Yes. Yeah. And they also said that you are very dedicated, especially dedicated to a task or to your friends. Yes. Do you find that to be true? That that would be true. That would be me. Uh-huh. And what make that to be true? I, I believe, I would say it's the upbringing. Mm-hmm. Um, being raised by my mom um, as my father passed when I was 12. Mm. So it was mom, grandma, aunts, and uncles. And they instilled when you start something completed, if you say you're going to do something, commit to it. If you can't do it, say so. Mm, those are good. You That's know, good. Uh, and I try to instill that also with, into my children. That's very, very good. And they also say that you are a singer and that they love to hear you sing. And you've <laughs> already shared that with us, so we thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank and they you. say that you're very dedicated to church. Yes, I am. Uh -huh. What activities do you have at church? Uh, well, now I'm presently over the culinary ministry at my church, mm -hmm. um, which means I make sure everything is there that they need if they're having an event whichever ministry is having an event that they have all the things that they need. The they supplies. supply their own food, but mm -hmm. I make sure everything else is there. Um, also, I sing in the choir, sing mm -hmm. on the praise team. Um, 
I just all around, wherever I'm needed, basically what I do. One of the other positive things that we heard is that you are dependable. So nobody never has to wonder if Ms. Sheila's going to show up. Yeah, um, if I say I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. That's beautiful. Yeah. Now there were some things that... <laughs> Okay. You're laughing before I can even get there, Ms. Sheila. Do you know some things already coming up? Oh, so probably. let me tell you one thing okay. that I find to be hard to believe. Someone said that if you don't like someone, you let them know it right off the bat. So if somebody doesn't agree with you, you let them know you don't agree with me. Well, it more than likely depends on the situation. Okay, I got and, another one for you now. Okay, well, and how they come at me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Which brings me to point number two. Okay. They say that you could go from one being very kind to 50 right away with an attitude. Oh, yeah. What's the oh, yeah? <laughs> I'm, it's true. <laughs> it, that's just the truth. Uh-huh. That's, that's me. It's... Um, I will go from, like you said, 1 to 50, mm -hmm. but it takes a lot of pushing to get me to that 50. Mm -hmm. And once I hit the 50, mm -hmm. the top's off, it's blown. So and between 1 and 50, do we get kind Miss Sheila, who I met today, okay. loving, spiritual, singer, uh -huh. loving God, good heart, I could tell. By the time you get to 10, what does it look like? You're, you're on the verge of pushing a button. And what does the face look like? Oh, I can't. I don't know what my face looks uh -huh. like. I can't. All right, we're you. at 30 now, Miss Sheila. Oh, what does well, What does that look like? I've probably blown a gasket. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when you hit 50, it is well, what? It's on. It's on? It's on. What does on look like? On Up is, in your face? On is ugly, loud. Uh huh. Uh. How else can I put it? Because since I don't do that like I did when I was younger, it didn't uh -huh. take much for me to get there when I was younger. Uh -huh. But I've learned to allow things to roll off my back. I might be in tears by the time we get to 50. Okay. Which means I'm hurt, but I'm angry. So, another comment was that you sometimes step in when you don't need to step in. So are you a part of that 50 being balled up because you're stepping in when you don't need to step in? No. Now, Ms. Sheila, don't look at me like that. No, I'm not I'm the not. one saying this stuff, okay? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say it. To me, if, you know, stepping in is because something might be going to me out of place. Mm -hmm. And so it's just natural for me to just want to intervene. So I'm having to learn how to bring it down. So let me, let, let's, let's talk about this for a second. Okay. Okay, I'm going to give you a scenario. Okay. You see people talking at church. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're planning that dinner mm -hmm. that you talked about. Mm -hmm. You got all your supplies, mm -hmm. and you already said they got to bring the food, they got to do what they have to do. Mm -hmm. How do you handle or do you find yourself putting in your two cents when they're doing something oh, come no. on be truthful oh no no -uh. if they if they're going to be over the kitchen for that particular uh -huh. event uh -huh. they're going to be over the so kitchen. it's nothing in there about what well, you feel this need to be done the way i feel like it need to be done only thing is i ask uh -huh. is you put the kitchen back the way you found it because uh -huh. then i get an attitude okay. because that means i have to go in there and get it back the way it needs to be so if you find it a certain way Put it back the way you found it. Okay, so your children say that you are very dependable. Mm -hmm. You're always there for them. Yeah. Okay, so now you have adult children. You mm -hmm. say nobody was under age of 30. So they're functioning about their everyday lives. Mm -hmm. I'm a mother, so I understand that. Okay. So what happens that would make you step in their family life? Anything that they would feel that you should not? Hold that, Miss Sheila. Mm. Think about it. Okay. We're going to go to commercial, and I'm going to come back and find out what you think about everything we just heard and what you're going to do about it, okay? okay. You, right. are, you okay? I'm all right. All right. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. Ms. Sheila has learned that she is kind, loving, and a good, dependable person, but she also finds that her attitude could go to 1 to 50, and she sort of butts in a little bit where she don't need to be in and express her opinion freely. We'll be right back. <laughs> Curiosity. Ooh, I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Oh.
We are back, and we're back with Miss Sheila, a strong woman right here <laughs> who's been married for 42 years, and the success of that, she says, is communication. However, we have learned in her reveal of what other people think about her, sometimes her communication could be a little harsh, a little blunt, without thought. <laughs> Thinking before you speak, yes. and a little button in and other people's business. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's like owning up to all of that. Okay, now when we left before, you we talked about a situation where your children, mm -hmm. adults, mm -hmm. living their own lives, mm -hmm. and somewhere in there, somebody feels, or maybe it's a friend who has observed. I don't know. I'm not telling that sometimes you butt in where you shouldn't butt in. Mm -hmm. So. You wanted to comment on that. So what's your comment? Okay. The button in where I shouldn't be button in. It like I said, it depends on the situation um and how they may be handling that situation at the time. Mm -hmm. Um and it gives me an opportunity while they're talking to hear what they've got to say. But it also so depends on how they're coming at the person. Okay, At now, Miss Sheila, you told me earlier mm -hmm. that you do not communicate unless a person communicates with you. So, button in is not somebody coming to you and saying, "Mama, this, this is, is true. this is wrong." This is about you mm -hmm. not being asked okay. and giving your opinion. Is that true? I might do that sometimes, yeah. But the majority of the time, with, when it comes to my children, mm -hmm. I try not to get into their business. Mm -hmm. um, they're the ones that have to live that life. Mm -hmm. And if I can, and I have a word that I can give them, and I, I get to the point where I can give a word or something to say about it, then I will, because that's just mama. Okay. You know, that's just a mama. So you feel a mama me. has the right, if she, I need to say something sometimes. that I see is going off, I can butt in. Is that what sometimes. I'm hearing? Sometimes. But no, not, not, not a, you know, how you got these mamas in everybody's business, all your business, uh -huh. all the time. That's, that's not, not me. Okay. That's not me. So let's just recap. Your friends. Right. Your spiritual associations. Mm -hmm. Your children mm -hmm. have made comments. They all feel that you're loving. Mm -hmm. You're a good person. You have a good heart. Mm -hmm. You can sing. You're dependable. <laughs> you're caring. So all of that is good. Okay. But now they're saying the cons of that mm -hmm. is that you have a tendency with your attitude that maybe in the communication you just go all the way up to 50. Mm -hmm. They're also saying that they did not ask for your opinion, but you're butting in. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? They're also saying that you sometimes let people that you don't like, rather than walk away, you let them know I don't like you. And also, that the attitude could be hurtful. So what are we going to do about that? And I'm going to say this from the point of view of knowing who I've learned who you are. Okay. How are you going to resolve that, Ms. Sheila? Okay. That button in, mm -hmm. I'm learning. And every day is a learning process. Yes, it is. When to and when not to speak. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's the button in. Mm -hmm. Part of it. What's going to be your trigger to say, okay, I need to stop? What's going to be your trigger? What's going to be in your mind to say, okay, I don't need to butt in? The Lord telling me, be quiet, hold your tongue. So be, has he told you that oh, before yes. you're not listening? Oh, yes, he has. Uh -huh. And the tongue just kind of like went off anyway. Uh -huh. And then I had to go back mm -hmm. and apologize ah, for what I had said. Beautiful. You know, so mm -hmm. I try not to get to that point to where... I don't hear what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do. Well, what about with you at 50? Mm, mm. You have 50. I'm you out 50. of control. You a, what is going to I be your trigger? I have 50 in a while, though. So, What's a while, you know, Miss Sheila? Oh, my gosh. Like a year or two or just last week? Oh, no, it has to be a couple of years. It's been a couple of years it before has, you go for 50? For me, before I get to a 50. Now, let me ask you, do you think... I'm not at 50, but other people around you feel that you're at 50? That's possible. Okay. That's a great possibility. So do you know <laughs> what 50 looks like for you? Is it okay? So sometimes you feel this is my norm. I can go to 50. Nobody going to say anything about it because this is who I am. Accept it. That's the way it's supposed to be. Then you found out a couple of weeks later you hurt somebody's feelings. And you're feeling bad. Uh, 
No, I haven't gotten to that. To okay, where I've good. hurt somebody's feelings. Mm -hmm. I have gotten to the frustration of mm -hmm. doing, you know, I'm doing something, and you have folks basically barking orders, do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. And so, and I get to that point, there's, at church, I can tell you there are, there's one person that can come up to me and just say, breathe, because she sees it. And she'll stand there until I get calm, and she'll go, okay. And then she'll walk away. My soon-to-be event planner. Yes, ma'am. That one person is not going to be with you to say breathe. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do when you have a client, high-end, demanding, want things this way, you put the napkin over here, she said, I don't want it that way, drop it down on the table, fix it differently. Who is going to tell you to breathe? How, what are, mm -hmm. how are you going to work a good on question. that? Yeah, uh -huh. That's a good question. That's a a, yes. a process, a daily process of when that comes up, mm -hmm. okay, I learned before doing things, mm -hmm. you got to pray. Mm -hmm. You got to ask the Holy Spirit to intervene where uh, yes. inter intervention is necessary. Mm -hmm. That would be an intervention right there. That would be. That would definitely be an intervention. Do you feel like that's something that going into the future, knowing that you get ready to do what you love, and you said the Lord told you to do it, mm -hmm. that this is the time in my life to work on some things that other people have said that might hinder my business? Most definitely. Okay. Most definitely. Miss Sheila, you are a beautiful mm -hmm. person. Thank you. You know what? We're getting ready to go to com commercial. Okay. We're going to come back and we're going to summarize all of this up. Oh. I'm here with Miss Beautiful Miss Sheila, <laughs> who have learned pros and cons about her personality and is willing to make a change. Come back and let's take a look and see what happens. have Miss Sheila, who was curious to know what her friends, family, and spiritual associations thought about her. Now, we have had an introduction of who she is, a beautiful woman, a woman who has been married 42 years, the second time, 42 years, mm -hmm. and also a woman who has raised her children to be dependable, like her, a woman who has raised her children to be strong, like her. Yes. A woman who raised her children to love God, yes. like her. And she says that she is kind and she's willing to work yes. for the Lord and also willing to pursue a new career at this time in her life, which I think is wonderful, event planner. But we also learn, besides being this great person, that there are some cons. She speaks when she should not speak. She let people who she does not like or get on her nerves, let them know that. She could go from kindness to 50 in a minute. And sometimes she butts in when she should not butt in. So I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Finish this statement for me. Okay. I, Miss Sheila, you don't have to say Miss Sheila if mm -hmm. you don't want to. I, Miss Sheila, mm -hmm. is going to make a change with the following things I have heard. Bye. I, Miss Sheila, am mm. going to make a change by the things that I have heard by mm. paying closer attention to what people are saying. Um, when you say pay attention closer to what people are saying, you mean what? In their communication. Okay. 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 Um, just like you and I are sitting here talking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what if someone else was to intervene in our conversation? Mm -hmm. I'd allow them the opportunity to say what they had to say okay. and then continue on okay. in our conversation. Okay. Um, ask the Lord to give me more patience mm. with people. So you do recognize you need to have more patience. Oh, I've always needed patience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. I, I've always said I have... My third born child was born with asthma, mm -hmm. but as when I was pregnant with him, my aunt made us write a letter and we had a prayer circle where all the women came to her house wow. for prayer, you know, mm -hmm. and so she had us all write a letter. And in my letter, I, I asked the Lord to give me patience, teach me how to have patience. And she told me, be careful what you ask for because he'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. And he did. And I always say, by way of my third-born child, 
-hmm. with the asthma. I had to learn to be patient with him. So you're going to repray? So I'm going to just ask the Lord to intervene upon mm -hmm. me, giving me the calm that I need when calmness mm -hmm. is needed, hold mm -hmm. my tongue when my tongue needs to be held, mm -hmm. and when mm -hmm. it's time to loose my tongue, mm -hmm. let it be his words and not my words. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else from what uh, you learned? From what I've learned, I just appreciate everything that they've had to say about me. So I know more about me where I need to make corrections in my life. It's a new year, so it's a new beginning. Hallelujah. Starting that, fresh. Sheila, yes. You know, getting, getting, starting to get things right. I don't make resolutions. I mm -hmm. just pray every time something goes on. I, I pray. So let me ask you another question. Mm -hmm. One to 50. Mm -hmm. How are you going to monitor that? A lot of prayer. <laughs> a lot of prayer? A lot of prayer. Will you be able to recognize when you're at a 10? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can recognize it now, but sometimes I just, you know, I, I've learned sometimes I have to walk away. And I've done that. I just walk away, and I've, I've gone out side, walked around, had my conversation with the Lord. I've done my rant. I've done my raving. And then when I get through, I just say, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to lose my mind and now on back and going back in. Okay. I have my last question I want to ask you. All right. All right. So as loving and kind and giving and dependable as you are, mm -hmm. you have a person that you feel you don't like. How can you not like a person, or do you feel I need to adjust myself around that person, or is it a possibility it could be me that's creating the well, conflict? How are you going to resolve that? Okay, I was taught you don't have to like everybody. Mm -hmm. You have to love everybody, hmm. but you don't have to like everybody. I do not have to like your ways. Mm -hmm. I still have to love you. But... but in the event, it could be me. Mm -hmm. So I asked the Lord, is it me? Do I need to work on me in order for me to get along with that person? What well, is what it I need to What about the fact that you're telling people you don't like that person? Okay, so you don't like them. Should that be something you tell other people I don't like them and no, express it? you're right. I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be telling them. I should mm -hmm. keep that to myself. Mm -hmm. Like I do go out and talk talk to the Lord about it and walk it off. Mm -hmm. And then go on back, mm -hmm. you know, and stop. You know, uh, being the one to tell. And realize you do need to love them. I know I have to love them. Mm -hmm. I don't have to like them. Okay, then. That sounds like a winner to me. <laughs> so out of everything you have heard, is there something that you want to express or something you want to tell me? I have enjoyed being a part of curiosity. Why? Because I have found out how family, friends, spiritual friends, what they feel, how they think about me, that they wouldn't normally tell me, but they'll tell someone else and relay it, and I'm finding this out. I enjoy finding out that That's so great. that I know where I need to grow Aww. and what changes need to be made in me. I may be 67, but I'm not dead, so therefore I still need to have corrections made in my life. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, Miss Sheila, it's been wonderful. I hope you have enjoyed, Miss Sheila. I think it's very, that your family is very right and your friends are right when they say you are strong to receive what you heard and be willing to make corrections. Thank you, Miss Sheila. And thank you for joining us with Curiosity. Next week, we have more reveals. Make sure you join us. Tune in because we'll be right here waiting for you. TV.com, the Everybody Network.